Hey, Cloud Champions, welcome to another Code Cloud hands-on tutorial where we're diving deep into one of Docker Desktop's most developer-friendly features known as Docker Init. So imagine you've just built an awesome application and now you want to containerize it. So instead of staring at a blank Docker file, realizing what you need to put in your Docker Ignore and all the other files you need, what if Docker could ask you a few questions and set up everything for you? That's exactly what Docker Init does. So what is Docker init? Introduced in Docker Desktop 4.18, Docker init is like having a setup expert right in your terminal. It basically asks you a few questions like your project's language and the framework, and it even detects some things. And what it does is it generates production ready Docker files, Docker ignore files, and readme with best practices built in. It's also gonna create some Docker compose files, which is awesome. Hi, I'm Michael with CodeCloud, and I'm here to talk about this in our tutorial today. If you like this content and you wanna see more about Docker Desktop or Docker in general, or pretty much anything related to containerization, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and let us know in the comments what you want. Meanwhile, let's dive in to our simple web app and show you how to make Docker init useful. Let's do it. We're here talking about Docker init. And so you can see inside this project folder that I've got a package.json, a package lock, my little node.js file, right? As well as, you know, a couple of other directories, some of which are just virtual environments and other pieces, right? I, I'm assuming one that you have Docker already set up, Docker desktops already running. And in my case, I actually have it running inside of Ubuntu on Windows 11, right? And so I have node installed and I have, you know, Docker desktop is already installed and already set up. And so, you know, everything we need is already here. Now, notice in this directory that there's no Docker file. There's nothing else, right? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make this full screen and we're going to do Docker init. Just that simple. And remember this, you have to be running Docker desktop 4.83 for this to show up. So if you have that, you're good. But if you don't have it, it's not gonna happen. So you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna say, you know, Docker command doesn't exist, or it's gonna show you the help, right? Now notice it says explicitly that this utility is gonna walk us through creating a Docker ignore file, a Docker compose file, and a Docker, a uh, readme Docker file. Notice the first question it's asking, like right off the bat, it's basically saying, what application platform are we using? Now, notice that it has auto detected that this actually contains node in there. So I just have to hit enter. Now, notice the list though. General purpose, I've got Java, PHP, basically .NET, Rust, Python, Go, and Node. And so I'm just gonna stick with, you know, Node. Now, it's also detected the version that I currently have, right? I'm just gonna say yes to that. And then it's gonna say, what, what package manager do you wanna use, right? And I'm just gonna stick with NPM because that's what I have installed. And then it says, what do you wanna use to start? Now, I don't know if that I have NPM set up, so I'm actually gonna stick with app.js, right? So just set it up this way. Notice that this is a very, very basic. Our node app is really just a single file, this app.js, and it's gonna run on port 3000, which I'm gonna answer that question in a second. And it's literally just gonna return hello from Docker to the root URL. I, I wanna mention that before I ran Docker init, I had already run npm init, right? And an npm install, which is why you see the node modules build in the upper left-hand side, right? So there were commands run to kind of set this up ahead of time. What port am I listening on? Well, you heard me say earlier that I said it's gonna run on port 3000, so we're gonna do that. Now notice, the minute I hit enter after answering those five questions, my directory structure looks a little different. So let's take a look at what's happening. Here we are, here's my original app.js, by the way, which confirms that this is just gonna print hello from Docker, but we don't necessarily need that. That's not the new stuff. Let's go take a look at the Docker ignore file. So notice that it's automatically kind of listed everything necessary to kind of screen out the common things that you would stick inside of your repository that you actually don't want pushed to repo. So that's important to know. The other thing is that let's take a look at the Docker file. So notice the Docker file syntax here, right? We've got our node version. We've got, you know, basically we're pulling from Alpine with this particular node version. We're setting some, uh, basically a production node environment by default. We're setting up our working directory. So this was all set up in just a blink of an eye and notice that it's expo exposing port 3000. And here's my start command, basically node app.js. Now, if I go over here and look at my compose.yaml, it basically has a single service here, right? 
with basically 3,000 being mapped across the board. Don't see there's nothing else as far as database connections or any other pieces in this because I didn't need them and I didn't set them up. Last but not least, so what we've got is we've got a Docker ignore file that was committed, we've got a compose file, we've got a Docker file that was created, and what about the readme file? And so here it's basically saying when you are ready to start, just run this command and it'll be ready at this URL. I mean, it gives some instructions for how to deploy it to the cloud, including like listing platform and other pieces like that. And then it gives references to Docker documentation just in case you need it. So let's actually do this. Let's actually take this command and let's run it and see what happens. So let's go back to our little console here and let's run this command. What is it going to do? So notice it's basically pulling the Alpine based image that we built and then it's basically running through the compose file, doing everything necessary. And now I've got a server running on port 3000. That's it. Just that straightforward, just that simple. And so let's go see if this is accurate. So I'm gonna pull up Brave and I'm basically gonna to go to localhost 3000 and see what happens. And there we are, hello from Docker. There it is, right off the bat. And that's just that simple to use Docker init to initialize whatever programming language you already have, have it containerized and have it follow best practices. And of course, since it's in Docker Compose, right? You can always gracefully stop. You can also have it run in the background, but you can do all of the Docker Compose standards if you want to. Notice that since I ran it just now, I had a build flag at the end of it. But if we go and look, that build flag is not necessary unless I want to force a build again, right? And that's it. And so that is the easiest way to use Docker init to get a simple app up and running. Now, there are a few things to consider, right? Is that, you know, with this Docker file in particular, you might want to tune the Docker file. So you might want to install additional OS packages or set environment variables so you can edit it as you see fit in order to, you know, basically add the proper configurations. Now, the Docker compose file, if you look at that, is really straightforward and simple and actually is just orchestrated for a single service. So if you need other services like a database or a cache, you can all define them here, right? And just so you're aware, when we were asked the questions earlier when we ran Docker init, if you choose the other option, so not Java, not Go, not Python, but choose the other option, it'll actually give you the ability to set up a Postgres SQL service in the compose file and it'll actually be commented out. So for example, you could add MongoDB by just adding a few lines. Do note that the Docker file will likely copy your source code in the image. So, you know, there may be instances where you actually just want to mount a local directory inside of your Docker container. So you can just do updates live. And also just know that you can just take a look at what's in these files and really spend some time learning about, for example, depends on, right? So you can actually make sure that nothing else starts until this service is actually healthy or you could look at the Docker file and possibly add more options or read the Docker file reference and add additional arguments, right? So just to end with this note, Docker init is super helpful, but it's not magic. Other applications, like very complex applications, might need a more custom Docker setup than the template provides. So in those cases, using Docker init can give you a starting point, but then you can just modify it from there, right? So it can suit your application's needs. That was a good example of how to use Docker init and set it up very simply. So consider what you can do now that your app is containerized. You could push the image to Docker Hub, you could deploy it to a cloud service or even Kubernetes, and you can easily integrate it into a CI CD pipeline and dump it into an artifact registry. The heavy lifting of containerizing the app is done, so you can focus on those next steps. And if you start a new project tomorrow in a different language, you can just reach for Docker init again to jumpstart the setup in a similar way. So the next time you're about to containerize something, give Docker init a try. You'll be pleasantly surprised at how much it handles for you. And from there, you can customize as needed and confidently run your app in a container. Hope you found this tutorial helpful and that it demystified the Docker init feature. If you did, please like the video and subscribe for more containerization tips. Happy Dockering and thank you for watching.